friends our knowledge about exoplanets is continuously increasing at a rapid pace in recent years astronomers have discovered more than 4000 such planets outside the solar system about which we had no clue earlier and this count is increasing today we not only know about the size of these planets but also what their temperature will be how will their surface be and what gases would be present in their atmosphere This is the reason that we often hear various types of news related to exoplanets like we have got a earth's twin or we have got a planet that's only full of water or we have got a planet that's got diamonds rain and so on and so forth friends we find such news related to exoplanets quite exciting but have you ever wondered that if these exoplanets are present at a distance of thousands of light years from us then how do astronomers find out how the surface of these planets will be or what gases are present in their atmosphere the second question related to this is that if the scientists are able to detect the biosignature presence on these exoplanets then on the basis of this can we say that life exists on any exoplanet in today's video we will know the answer to these two important questions so without wasting any more time Let's start today's video. Hi, I am Sudhir Talati and today we are going to find out why is it difficult to find life on exoplanets. But before proceeding further, let us first understand what are exoplanets. You know that all the planets in our solar system orbit around the sun. Planets that orbit around other stars are called exoplanets. Exoplanets are very hard to see. directly with telescopes they are hidden by the bright glare of the stars they orbit every human being present on earth wants to know whether life exists in any form in this universe other than the earth or not we can find this out by finding other exoplanets like earth because of this this topic attracts not only the astronomers but also the common people but finding exoplanets and detecting gases present in their atmosphere is not an easy task because these exoplanets are present at a distance of so many light years from us so how do we find exoplanets and how do we find out the temperature of exoplanets present thousands of lights away from us what is their surface like and what gases are present in their atmosphere come let's find out light is such a means with the help of which we can detect the presence of space objects in this universe far away from us we use transit to learn about the nature of exoplanets what is it let's understand that we know that stars have their own light whereas planets have no light of their own we also know that planets are much smaller than their stars and they revolve around the star during their rotation these planets come between their host star and earth for some time This is called transit. Because this exoplanet comes between its star and earth, at that time the brightness of the star becomes slightly less than before. Astronomers can estimate the size and orbit of exoplanets from the difference in the duration of the transit and the intensity of the light curve. Anyway, when the exoplanet is between its star and earth, some of the light coming from the star passes through the atmosphere of the exoplanet. During this this light interacts with the chemical elements present in the exoplanet's atmosphere the different types of atoms and molecules out there only absorb the light of certain specific wavelengths while allowing the light of other wavelengths to pass easily by observing this light when we prepare the spectrum of the host star it gives us an idea of the elements present in the atmosphere of this exoplanet in fact Different elements create different absorption lines in the star's spectrum. The more the element whose light absorption is stronger, the more that element is in the atmosphere of that exoplanet. So it is meant to say that only from these absorption lines formed in the spectrum of the star, we get to know which elements will be present in the atmosphere of that exoplanet and in what quantity they will be. This also lets us know its temperature. Well, When we get to know which elements will be present in what quantity, 
then we also get an idea of what that exoplanet would look like and what its surface would be like. I hope that by now, you must have understood how astronomers detect the size, surface and the gases present in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Let us now come to the second question. If we are able to detect the gases present in the atmosphere of the exoplanets, does it not mean that if we get the biosignatures on these planets, we can be sure of life on these planets? For example, if we find a planet in which liquid water is present, or if we find a planet whose atmosphere contains ozone or methane, can we say with certainty that life will definitely exist on such planets? The answer is no. Finding a biosignature on a planet in this universe does not confirm that life will exist on that planet because biosignature is not created only by living beings, but sometimes it is also created by natural processes. Let's understand this with some examples. Leave any exoplanet. Let's talk about the nearest planet from our Earth. Yes, I am talking about the red planet, Mars. For the past several years, we have been detecting large clouds of methane on Mars. Sunlight breaks methane easily, which means that if it is not produced continuously, then after some time, we cannot get its traces. This means that even if we accept the fact that life was present in some form on Mars billions of years ago, even then, we cannot say that the methane that we are getting today in the atmosphere of Mars is produced by that. There must be something on Mars that is constantly producing methane. We know that most of the methane gas on Earth is produced by living beings and we have been getting traces of methane on Mars too. From this, can we come to the conclusion that just like Earth, life on Mars still exists in some form, due to which there is continuous formation of methane? The answer is still no. Methane is produced on Earth by living beings. But this does not mean that everywhere in this universe it is created only by living beings. In fact, methane can also be formed naturally due to volcanoes when rocks interact with hot water. NASA tried to find out from the Spirit and Opportunity rover how methane is being formed on Mars. The Curiosity rover also had enough tools to detect it. After a few months of monitoring, Curiosity found an increased amount of methane on the surface of Mars. However, there was a lot of controversy over this detection, as it was found that Curiosity itself was carrying methane, due to which it was possible that it would have left methane in its surrounding area as well. That is, Curiosity itself was the source of the increased amount of methane that it detected on the surface of Mars. It is also possible that some rocky meteorite may have fallen in its vicinity, due to which the gases released have affected its result. Since then, we have sent many orbiters, rovers and landers on Mars to find out why the amount of methane present in its atmosphere is also increasing and decreasing due to change in the season of Mars. After all, what is it on Mars that is continuously producing methane? Is this happening due to some natural process or is life still present in some form on Mars? Because we do not have any evidence to reach any conclusion, it still remains a mystery to us. Even if we come to know about the presence of methane on an exoplanet, we cannot say with certainty that life will exist there in some form. Similarly, a few years ago, we had detected a Neptune-sized exoplanet named HAT-P-26P. It was circling the nearest star. We detected water vapor in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. Wherever there is water on Earth, there is presence of life, which was also present on this planet. Does this mean that life will exist on this planet like Earth? The answer is still no. Having water on Earth definitely means life. But this is not the case everywhere in this universe. Water is present in many places in the universe, but no traces of life are present there. The James Webb Space Telescope, launched by NASA a few months ago, 
is able to better sense the atmosphere of these exoplanets. That is in the coming time, through this, we will not only be able to find many new exoplanets, but will also be able to study their atmosphere in a better way. Its first target in exoplanets may be the TRAPPIST-1 system, in which six planets are in the habitable zone, which are circling a red dwarf star. Webb is able to detect ozone, methane, and other biosignatures present in the exoplanet's atmosphere, which are necessary for the origin of life. But like I already said, no biosignature can tell us for sure whether life exists on any planet or not because their production can also be a natural process. Astrophysicist John Lee Grenfell of the German Aerospace Center prepared a report in which he reviewed all the biosignatures and tried to find out by the presence of which biosignatures on exoplanets we can say that life will be present there. His first target was molecular oxygen, that is O2. Oxygen is the basis of life on Earth. Without it, we can't even imagine life. This is what we are using to breathe at the moment. The special thing about molecular oxygen is that it remains present on an exoplanet for thousands of years without any source. It is formed by the photosynthesis process on Earth. But there are other scenarios due to which O2 can be present on an exoplanet. Like when a planet starts losing its atmosphere under the influence of its star, the hydrogen present there goes into space, yet their molecular oxygen remains. Even on such a planet, we will definitely detect the molecular oxygen. That is to say, even the presence of O2 will not ensure that there will be life on that planet. Presence of ozone, that is O3, also makes our Earth special. So does this mean that if ozone is present on a planet, then life is possible there? Here also, the answer is no. The ozone layer is also present on planets like Venus and Mars, but we haven't found any signs of life on them yet. Even in the icy moons of our solar system, we have detected ozone. That is to say, even the presence of ozone on an exoplanet does not prove that there will be life there. The next biosignature we are looking for on exoplanets is nitrous oxide which is also known as laughing gas. It is produced by bacteria present on Earth and contributes to the Earth's nitrogen cycle. The special thing about nitrous oxide is that Earth is the only planet in the solar system in whose atmosphere it is found. But if you are thinking that it is found only in those planets where there will be life, well then, you are wrong again. Because it can also be formed naturally. When scientists tried to find out how it must have been formed in the early days of the Earth, they found that nitrous oxide must have been produced when the sulfur-rich ocean present on Earth at that time interacted with nitrogen. This cycle would have run not only on Earth but also on Venus and Mars. That is to say that if we find nitrous oxide on a planet, then there can be two possibilities. Firstly, there can be life on that planet. And secondly, that planet is still in its early stage. Methane is the next name in biosignature. We have already talked about methane, wherein I mentioned that methane is formed on Earth due to the organisms present there. But it is not only present on Mars, but there are oceans of methane on Titan. That is, even with methane, we cannot confirm the existence of life on any planet. To confirm the existence of life on other planets, astrobiologists have also suggested other hydrocarbons, such as ethane and isoprene. But there are many problems with them too. If any advanced civilization is present on any planet, then we can detect them by detecting the pollutants emitted by them. Astrobiologists call this technosignatures. This may include nuclear fallout and pollutants such as chlorofluorocarbons. This would be a really effective way to find advanced civilization on another planet. But the problem with this is that it will be a very difficult task to detect these chemicals in planets that are many light years away from us. 
there is also a way to find a planet full of life in which we do not even need to scan the atmosphere of the exoplanet. Vegetations on Earth reflect a specific wavelength of light in the 700 to 750 nanometer range. Astrobiologists call this the red edge because in the near infrared range, the reflectivity of vegetation is increased by five times compared to the planet's surface, by tracking which we can find out whether vegetation is present on any exoplanet or not. Actually, the chlorophyll present in vegetables absorbs most of the visible light, but becomes almost transparent to light of wavelength above 700 nanometers. The cellular structures present in the vegetation reflect these infrared light because each cell behaves like an elemental corner reflector. However, at this time, we do not have such telescopes that can observe it directly. But by analyzing how a planet reflects its light on its moon, we can find out planets full of vegetation. If we talk about the Earth, it would have looked more purple due to the presence of RK bacteria in its early days. As our ground observation and space telescopes continue to develop, we are not only discovering more exoplanets than ever before, but are also able to understand them better. Even though we cannot yet detect life on any other planet, hopefully, we will be able to do so in the coming time. Many people say that to detect life on other planets, why do we always try to detect liquid water, methane, oxygen, etc.? Life on other planets may not only be carbon-based. There may be such creatures living on other planets who use other gases for breathing than oxygen, or they survive even in those conditions in which we cannot survive. Friends, this is absolutely possible. But it will be almost impossible for us to find such creatures because we do not know about any such creature till now. It's as if I were to ask you to find someone on Earth whose face or anything else is not known. So will you be able to find it? No. We can find something only if we know something about it. We have not only seen many forms of life on Earth, but also done their detailed analysis. Therefore, if we meet Earth-like conditions on any other planet, then the chances of life on those planets will increase significantly. This is the reason why we try to find Earth-like conditions to look for life on other planets. If you enjoyed the video, then do like it. I want at least 1000 likes on this video. So please keep liking and share and subscribe to my channel. See you next time with another fantastic science video. Till then, save the future.